All eyes in the college basketball world are on the Cinta Center tonight for the game of the evening in the sport. The lone ranked versus ranked matchup will pit number 17 Providence against number 21 Xavier. Welcome to Big East Shootaround, everybody. John Fanta here in the Queen City for what should be a fun one between these two teams who, when they met last year at the Cinta Center, the Friars looked like they were about to pull out just their second win at the Cinta Center. But the Musketeers found a miracle, and Colby Jones was the hero with a game-winning three, a dramatic affair, and unlike last year, this place will have a capacity crowd tonight. Cincinnati is buzzing for their Bengals and for these Xavier Musketeers who look like a surefire NCAA tournament team, but tonight brings a different challenge, a 16-2 Providence team. The Friars with that record for the first time since 1978. Let's get to Big East Hoops headlines. On Tuesday night, Villanova and UConn flex their muscles. Both scoring 20-plus point victories, the Wildcats over DePaul, and UConn rolling past Georgetown behind Adama Sonogo, who continues to be an absolute force in the Big East. Sonogo with another near double-double performance in this one, 19-8 for the Huskies, as UConn goes to 5-2 in conference play. Meanwhile, Villanova now 7-2 in Big East play, and on their last seven games, three different times, the Wildcats have held their opponent to under 44 points. Really good defensive effort by this Villanova team as of late, and Justin Moore and Colin Gillespie combining for 30 in the win over DePaul on Tuesday evening. Headline number two, Shaka Smart and the Marquette Golden Eagles take their six-game winning streak to Newark. A big one tonight against the Seton Hall Pirates as these two teams played to a down-to-the-wire finish in Milwaukee. An ending call that caused quite a bit of buzz with the Golden Eagles coming out with the win. Well, this rematch this evening, 8.30 Eastern time on FS1, will provide some real fire to it. Over the six-game winning streak, Marquette has shot 50% from the field. Justin Lewis has been a beast. For Seton Hall to bounce back from the quite surprising loss to St. John's on Monday night, the Pirates will need Jared Roden to snap out of a funk and be the alpha that they need. Big one for Shaka Smart's Golden Eagles who come in red hot, and even bigger one for Seton Hall being back at the Prudential Center and in need of a bounce back of some sort. And then finally, the top 25 showdown ahead tonight. You've got Xavier, a team that has gotten off to a 4-3 and three start to conference play. And talking with Travis Steele, you'll hear from him from uh, uh, in a moment, the Musketeers are a team that has not shot the ball as well recently. So finding higher percentage looks, sharing the basketball, defense hasn't been the issue. They're only allowing 64 points per game, as have the Friars. It's about winning that physical war. And we caught up with Travis Steele to talk more about that. Centos is absolutely going to be electric tonight. Um, it's a great opportunity for us. Listen, Providence is playing terrific, playing like one of the best teams in all of college basketball. Coach Cooley's doing an incredible job. Nate Watson starts and ends with him. I mean, he's an, he's an absolute monster around the rim. We've got to do a great job with him. Noah Horkler as well. I think he's an X factor for them. He's a guy that can really stretch it, shoot it. He's leading them in rebounding. And it's a little bit sneaky, but he's leading them in rebounding. So we've got to do a great job up front with physicality around the rim. But we also have to move the ball. We have to share the ball. Got to get the ball to the second and third sides of the floor. That's really imperative for us to get the shot that we want. I expect this to be a war. You know, we've had some great games against uh, Xavier in the past. In particular, in this building, we haven't had a lot of success yet. We have played well. You know, we got we to be able to withstand the crowd, play with some emotional maturity, share the ball, make some layups, you know, try to make some, uh, try to get some key stops. But overall, let's try to improve today. My job today as the coach is to inspire our kids to be better every single time out. I would say it's a sign of a mature team that all is aligned to try to do whatever it takes to win. Sometimes it's not going to be your night. It's going to be a night for someone else. So I'm really proud of the way our players have responded in you know, adverse moments, and we're going to need everybody to get on board today because we're going to need we're going to need a valiant effort in order for us to get a win in this, in this tough, tough environment. We are ready for the Big East Championship. And you can feel the intensity in the building. Let's go. How about that? The red storm standing up. Exclamation point. Villano. He willed that one to the cup.
It should be a really interesting affair between Providence and Xavier. Think about this for a moment. All time, the Musketeers are 9-1 and one at the Cintas Center against the Friars. But this kind of sums up the double round robin format of the Big East schedule. The Friars are 7-2 and two against Xavier when they're at home. So this conference is all about holding serve on your hardwood. For Xavier, a chance to get to 5-3 and three in league play, a chance to make a statement against a Providence team that is 16-2 and 6-1 and one in the Big East for the first time ever. And I look tonight at the five position as a big, big key to this game. Nate Watson, the constant for Providence. But how about Jack Nungy for Xavier? And the way that he has given this team that physical edge and a toughness to them, also a big-time shot maker. So I'm really looking forward to watching those two veterans go up against each other this evening in Cincinnati. Now with more on the matchup between the Musketeers and the Friars, and his observations around the Big East. He is a national analyst and one of the very best from CBS Sports and part of CBS and Turner's March Madness coverage. It's the one and only Ohio's own Clark Kellogg. What do you see in the matchup between Xavier and Providence? Well, I can't wait for it. Glad we, we have it on CBS Sports Network. I mean, it's always great to have quality games from the Big East on our network. So, yeah, I look at this game, the Centos Center, one of the great venues, I think, in all of college basketball, size, engagement of the crowd, and they've got a really good team, veteran team, as you indicated. Um, anytime you go on the road, it's a challenge. And they'll be a little salty coming off that loss at Providence. I'm, I'm sorry, that loss at Marquette. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, a typical Big East kind of matchup. You know, Providence has done it. Obviously, Nate Watson in the middle is a key guy and has really been an anchor um, for them the last couple of seasons. Um, but they've done it with contributions from just about everybody that Ed plays. I mean, it's more uh, the sum of the parts is, you know, the sum of the whole is greater than the individual pieces with them. And that's always a source of confidence and comfort when you go on the road. So uh, I think it'd be really, I love Xavier's team. I like what they can do. Scruggs, Nate Johnson, and Jerome Hunter has played well. nunji has been good. Fremantle getting back in his rhythm. I mean, we're looking at two, obviously two tournament teams um, trying to stake a claim to the Big East Conference Championship regular season wide. I'll give you a, an observation that I keep hearing here over the last couple of weeks. And you said yourself that you had a feeling that Shaka Smart would get things going here quickly at Marquette. And one of the takes, Clark, has been there's just something about Shaka Smart that makes it the perfect marriage at Marquette. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Yeah, you know, you take a look at fit. I always talk about it with young players heading to a particular college as they're being recruited. Fit is important in terms of what makes you most comfortable. And I do believe that this is a really good fit for Shock. He's from Wisconsin. He's a guy who's had tremendous success as a young coach at VCU. And then grew and learned in some tough times at Texas. I mean, he had good teams and just had some terrible, terrible luck in the tournament. And, you know, in that one and done crucible of March Madness, it can make the ordinary look great and the really good look ordinary. And I think I'm paraphrasing a quote that Shaka actually shared with me in talking about how people perceive your level of success. And he's been really good about staying focused on what he needs to do. It is the 40th year of the Big East tournament mm -hmm. inside Madison Square Garden this March. Yeah. And, and it'll be very cool to see fans back in the stands at, at the no Mecca doubt. during conference tournament week and all over venues across the country. I'm curious, when you think Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden, what's the thing at the top of your mind? Doesn't get any better than that. I've had the privilege of calling the Big East Tournament a couple of times on Westwood One Radio. There are portions of it, and even back to my days at ESPN. And that is a special, special event with a great history of tremendous players and teams and exciting games. I just... My, my, over, my, my, my first impression is it doesn't get better than the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden because that arena for hoops is just, I mean, it's as special as it gets at every level, at every level. I mean, the pros love going there more than probably any other venue in the NBA. 
and college kids that have a chance to go there, particularly if you're connected to the Big East and that tournament, you know how special it is because of the venue, the history of the venue, and the way the fans embrace and know um, basketball. So it doesn't get any better than the Big East and Madison Square Garden for me. We welcome you to Manhattan and the Big East tournament. Here at the Garden, decibel levels will be high. This is gonna be a good one, folks. Two Big East powers. You gotta be strong. And that will do it. The Musketeers. Oh, how about that? And the jam. Thanks again to Clark Kellogg for taking the time on Shoot Around, and you can catch Xavier and Providence on one of his networks, CBS Sports Network, 6.30 Eastern time right here. We'll get to the other action as well to come with Paul Frischner, Xavier's own. He will have some keys to this one. But let's turn to a feature on a musketeer who is the heart and soul of this program. Back for a fifth season, Paul Scruggs feels like he has unfinished business and he would love to lead this Xavier program back to the big dance floor. Tell me why you decided to use the extra year eligibility and come back here. Um, I love playing with my teammates from last year. You know, we basically got the same team from last year and our chemistry with each other was very good. Coming back together with those guys and just playing the game that we love. One thing that I find underrated with you that doesn't get discussed enough is that you led the Big East last year in assists. What goes into the playmaking? You know, it's just um, I try to draw as much as attention as I can and look for my shooters. And, you know, I got trust in them that they're going to knock down a shot every time. He's just a warrior, John. I mean, he, he obviously has a tremendous work ethic. He sets the tone for our team every single day in practice. So we track here at Xavier the Xavier way, which is who wins the basically the practice player of the week, right? You get to wear a gold jersey the next week. And Paul's got the all is the all-time winningest uh, gold jersey guy in our program's history, right? So he's won more than anybody else. So that just tells you that Paul's an everyday guy. He brings it every single day. He's going to compete, and that's who we are here as a program. Who's your biggest inspiration in life? Uh, definitely my family. I do everything for them. I got five brothers, one sister, so I'm the baby, and you know, just I love them. I love them to death, and I do anything for my family, and they do the same to me. So, what's a lesson? Something, a quote, something that you always try to live by that they've taught you? Don't try to take everything too fast. Don't try to go too fast. Take your time. Think about things. Do you feel like you've been doubted? Uh, yeah, but I don't look at things like that. You know, I just look at things as uh, just get better. Being here at Zave this whole time, you know, we haven't been talked about as much as uh, we all want to. And just trying to find that dog in everybody so everybody will want to talk about us, you know. Let's get Frisch's perspective on this matchup. We have Big East correspondent Paul Frischner with us to talk about this top 25 showdown between Xavier and Providence. Frisch, what's at the top of your mind when you look at this game? Well, when I look at Xavier and Providence here tonight at the Cintas Center, the biggest thing in my mind, John, is the front court. Xavier's had a little bit of a struggle this year defensively down in the front court, especially when you look at Zach Fremantle. And his defense in the last few games is since he's come back from that injury, he's been back now about a month and a half since he was out for a few months looking at the offseason and the preseason it was a struggle for him to kind of get back into his mojo get his feet underneath of him but now his offense may be starting to round into form a little bit but defensively when you look at Providence you have you know, Nate Watson Noah Horkler you got some big bodies down low by the basket under the rim that can rebound they can score they can post you up Xavier can't get themselves into too big of a hole tonight. Providence, you know that's what they're going to be doing. You know that's what Ed Cooley is going to be telling his team tonight. We're going to attack Xavier around the basket. Does Xavier have a response for that? To me, I feel like Xavier has the edge in the backcourt tonight. I feel like Xavier can take advantage uh, with their guards and their speed. But in the front court, I think it's Providence that that's going to be their focus here this evening. It's a vintage Ed Cooley team with the way that they play in the paint. And it'll be interesting to see if Xavier can improve, especially as the horn goes off. 
in the late goings uh, of this game because at Marquette on Sunday, the Musketeers really didn't have their offensive DNA. What's the key to that? Yeah, one thing that Xavier has, you could say maybe it's either been a good thing or, or it's been maybe not so good of a thing this year is that Xavier's had eight different players lead this team in scoring. Now you could say it's a good thing because you have a ton of options, right? You could say, okay, any given night one player could go off, but when you really need a bucket, when you really need somebody that's going to go out there and win you a basketball game, do you have that one guy that's going to step up? Do you have that one guy that's going to be tough as nails to go out there and hit a big shot? And you look at Dewan Odom back in December here against Marquette. He leads the team with 19 points. Sometimes he's been a little quiet offensively, but you look at Colby Jones, a guy who a lot of people feel like maybe has the best NBA potential on this Xavier team. He's starting to round into form with his aggressiveness. The more aggressive Colby Jones is, you feel like that's kind of how this team is starting to go. If Colby can be aggressive, if he can attack the basket, that opens up so much more offensively for Xavier. Adam Kunkel, can he still hit shots? He's been on fire lately from three. So all of those things combined are some of those things that you're looking for tonight out of Xavier to try and pull this off here at home. Looking at the Big East Hoop slate tonight, Xavier and Providence, 6.30 Eastern Time, CBS Sports Network. There is an FS1 doubleheader on the men's side with Creighton traveling to Butler. Bulldogs, they looked much better at Providence on Sunday, just couldn't finish. So they put it together back at Hinkle Fieldhouse this evening. And then also, how about Marquette, number 22 in America, visiting Seton Hall. That's on the men's side and a busy night on the women's side as well. Seton Hall at Marquette and a marquee matchup, Anissa Morrow and DePaul. They will welcome in Connecticut this evening. And in Big East women's basketball, that is a big, oh, big yes. game between Doug Bruno and Gino Oriema. Oh, no doubt about it. Those are two marquee staples of this conference. Doug Bruno, a legend in the Big East, of course, and Gino Oriema, no, no words need to be said for Gino. But, yeah, certainly a, a loaded night of Big East hoops. How about that? It'll be a great Wednesday. Get out the skyline chilly. Oh. Where do you think we're going here? Of course, of course, right. Skyline. Right we'll after. see you there. Yeah, we'll, we will see you there. We've got a date <laughs> set up right after Providence and Xavier Tangle in a top 25 showdown for Paul Frischner. I'm John Fanta. That does it for us from now uh, here at the Cintas Center. Enjoy the evening of Big East basketball.